After a bad loss to Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney, he lost bad. Rapper Sauce Walker, he chimes in and he blames Bill Haney. He thinks Bill Haney, some of the things that were done, put his son in a compromising position. I think it's an interesting topic for today's video. Hit the like button and subscribe. Now listen to Sauce Walker. Oi, oi, man. I want to give my closing statements for the fight last night, man. Hell of a fight last night. Hell of a motherfucking event. First of all, I want to salute Eddie Hearn and Oscar De La Hoya for putting on a great-ass event last night, the zone boxing. Great event last night. I wish we had a better undercard. I wanted to see more fighters like Scrappy Ramirez, you know what I'm saying, showcase their skills. But let's get to the business. Let's get to the point. Let's get to why we're here now. Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney. Now, I know the hood want to be mad at Devin Haney, but I'm sorry. We cannot be mad at Devin Haney. Devin Haney put on a hell of a performance last night. He showed he grit. He showed heart. He showed uh, uh, perseverance and, and the, the, the willpower to never give up, no matter how many times you get knocked down. And as a boxer and as a fighter, you have to respect that. He got in the ring. He put his life on the line. All of that. Who we can be fucked up with, though, is Bill Haney. Bill, you fucked up the spiel. Bill, you came out there like Don King and you do not produce a done thing. I understand that you are Devin Haney's father, but it might be time for Devin to pick up a new trainer so he can get extra skill set and extra alternative boxing uh, 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 strategies to use when we're presented with different fights, with different styles of fights. Because as we all know in boxing, styles make fights. And you just think, Ryan, you just think Devin Haney up in a professional championship boxing match at 140 where he ain't he still ain't comfortable at weight fighting amateur boxing style for points while Ron Garcia came up here drunk full of tequila and ready to have a fucking bar fight. He didn't come here for no boxing match. He came for a brawl. He came here to whoop ass. He came to throw punches. He ain't come to score to get the better scores on the scoreboard and, and, and get more points and fight strategically. He came to win. And that I feel is the problem with Ryan Goss, with, with Devin Haney last night was that he was not letting go of his hands and he was depending too much on IQ instead of raw aggression and response of this nigga is trying to whoop my ass. I understand skills, we understand defense, we understand timing, we understand chess. But at a certain point during that fight, after the first and second knockdown, there is no more chess. There's no more chess. He's already, he's winning. He made the better moves. Some of your best pieces have been taken off the board. Chess is over with. Soon as David Haney went back to that corner, you're supposed to tell your son, hey man, take the motherfucking gloves off. It's time to kick ass. We putting out all the motherfucking stops, throw all the punches, unleash the whole arsenal. Where was the right, the David Haney we seen against San Diego? Where was the David Haney overhand that we seen against Moran? That's all we needed. All Devin Haney had to do was unleash the overhand that he threw against Moran a couple of times. Worth the jab. We talking about Devin Haney, somebody who had one of the best jabs in the business. Arguably the best jab in boxing. Next to Jerome Boost Ennis, my little nigga Raymond Ford, and, 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 and uh, fucking Crawford. We talking about somebody who got probably the best jabs. That was not being utilized. His punches was not being utilized last night because I feel that the game plan that they had was to just duck the left hand. We're going to duck the left hand and we're going to outclass him with boxing skills. And that shit didn't work. Because why? Ryan Garcia is a faster fighter. He's a stronger fighter. But he's not the same fighter with the, the, the less IQ and the less defense the, the lack of defense that he used to have, Derek James, Derek James has changed that. He's not the same Ryan Garcia. He, 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 his hands is lifted up more. Yes, the Philly shell that he used was looked ugly. It looked busted and disgusted. But guess what? It fucking worked. The Philly shell that Ryan Garcia used last night worked. It was ugly. It wasn't polished. It wasn't pretty. It wasn't masterful like Floyd Mayweather. But at the end of the day, it protected his chin. It protected his jawline. It protected his eyes. And all, all that Devin Haney could attack was the, this nigga ribs and the shoulder blade. Like, hey, he kind of cook him. It's good to see a rapper, you know, who's, who really respects the sport of boxing. He kind of cooking though.
It wasn't pretty. It wasn't masterful like Floyd Mayweather. But at the end of the day, it protected his chin. It protected his jawline. It protected his eyes. And all all that Devin Haney could attack was the this nigga ribs and the shoulder blade. Like, what the fuck? What was that? In my opinion, when Ryan Garcia was doing the bullshit, uh, uh, Philly Shell, Devin Haney was supposed to come around with left with the same level that he was getting hit hit with. But instead, he's throwing the right hand to the body. Like you finna break his rib cage or something. No. So we're gonna be mad at anybody. We gotta be mad at Bill, man. Bill, you know what I'm saying? This is one of them times when your father being your coach, your daddy ain't never made it to the league. You know what I'm saying? This is, and I love Bill Haney. I love everything that they do over there at DHP. I'm just saying, last night was not a boxing match. It was supposed to be a bar fight. That was a club fight. You know what I'm saying? And if you never fought in the streets, you never fought in the club, then you won't understand what I'm trying to say. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes skills can't pay the bills when you fighting against somebody who has most strength and raw talent. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, a great fight, great event. Devin Haney, you did your shit. You still the champ. You still got the belt. You know what I'm saying? You can always come back and do it again. You know what I'm saying? Ryan Garcia, great fight. Great redemption for yourself. Way to change your skill set. Learn, pick up defense. You picked up whatever you want to call it with the California shell. You know what I'm saying? And hey, great fight. You know what I'm saying? He say he finna go up to 147. It's gonna get a little real up there, but you proved yourself last night, man. Great fight. You know what I'm talking about? Thank God I saved my money. I ain't bet on the fight last night, but I just had to speak on it. You know what I'm talking about? Ooh, I guess it's still the Mayweather era. Wow, he said it's still the Mayweather. Because Bill be saying that that Mayweather era is over. So he said the tank era, the Mayweather era is over. Sauce Walker was he was cooking. Like I said, it's good to see a rapper who's like really paying attention to boxing. Like he's even put some boxers like David Benavidez in some of his bars, you know, I heard. So that's cool. Now he's blaming Bill Haney. He thinks that Bill Haney it might not be the right fella in the position. Listen, my thing is, I think Bill Haney fell in love with the cameras. You know, he, he kind of became... They got rid of the Godfather dude that was kind of Devin's hype man and some of the other people that used to be on his team. And it seems like Bill Haney kind of assumed that role and he kind of fell in love with the camera. Like Suge said, any of your artists want to remain artists, don't want to have to worry about the executive producer all in the video, right? People to the point where people start calling him B Diddy and stuff like that. But sometimes in the father son tandems and relationships maybe your father's taking you as far as he can now there is a lot that he said sauce walker said that i agree with but there's some things that i i disagree with like devin does have one of the best jabs so i agree there but my thing is he i think devin might need a different trainer who has fought before you know i'm not here to pick the trainer i don't know but somebody who's fought before that can give them the technical expertise and i'm just being honest with you guys i truly believe that devin has yes men around him that everybody is singing your praises and not necessarily willing to confront you or say hey man maybe you should do it this way devin has made a lot of money He's only 25 years old. So since he's the breadwinner, everybody just kind of like agrees with the breadwinner. You know, that's why I wouldn't want to be a part of a big entourage if I, I couldn't be honest with my people, my friend, my team. You know what I mean? Things like that. So I think that's kind of the bigger issue. Everybody told, it sounds like on Devin's team, convinced him that Ryan was an ish. And it sounds like Devin's team underestimated Ryan Garcia. They thought, just listen to the commentary before the fight. Ryan's a C-plus fighter. Ryan, all he has is a left hook. Ryan ain't changed since the amateurs. He hasn't improved, but I've improved, you know? And I think that Devin's team and Devin started to buy into his own hype. 
because he was doing well for himself. I beat Cambosis twice in Australia, became undisputed, tough, close fight with Lomachenko, but I beat him on paper. Some people would disagree with that, but on paper, he beat him. Then he easily beat Regis Progre. So he's not looking at a guy like Ryan Garcia as having the antidote, but Ryan Garcia, despite all the antics, he had it. Now, Sauce Walker was saying stuff like he need to get on the jab and stuff like that. I think it was more Devin recuperative powers are kind of sus, a bit questionable. I truly believe that because he had like a slow, lazy jab and Ryan zapped him in the first round with the with the lap, left hook and he connected and Devin's legs seemed like almost like they went immediately. And part of it could be Devin gaining all this weight in his offseason, crunching his body down, which I already told you. These fighters, a lot of these new fighters are not staying around their true walk around weight and their competing competition weight are two different things. As you get older, that start that starts to tax you. You know what I'm saying? And even though Devin's only 25, once you start getting to that 30 mark, you have to make some decisions and really be in the correct divisions and stuff like that. We've seen it with Canelo. Canelo, his last fight at 54, he looked crazy at the at the weigh-in, right? Crazy. I believe his last fight was Liam Smith. Then his next fight, he fought Chavez Jr. and moved up to 164.5. You can't keep abusing your body once you hit that 30 mark. You know, it becomes harder and harder to do. So I think it's just, it was like the perfect storm. Ryan's crazy antics, you know, Bill Haney as the coach, not necessarily knowing what to do in those moments from a technical expertise perspective, like a Floyd senior. And then like kind of just getting too big for your britches, saying the Mayweather era is over, like saying we whoop tank, the tank era is over. We whoop Floyd Mayweather in sparring, saying Subrio Matias ducked us. Just stuff that doesn't, especially after looking at that fight, doesn't to me sound believable. It didn't before, and it definitely doesn't now. So you whoop Floyd Mayweather, but you can't whoop Ryan Garcia, who's who's admitted that he was drinking every day in camp. That sounds very hard for me to believe. Truly sounds hard to believe. So it is what it is. Let me know what you guys think. Sauce Walker believes that Bill Haney is to blame. and ultimately Devin needed to knuckle up and have like more of like a, a gritty brawl but I think Ryan took that play away when he took Devin's legs away so Devin was really existing to me off of pure heart pure being like a hard worker in the gym and having good conditioning and basically fumes he was just operating on fumes it's like your car is on E but there's a little piece of gas in in the in the gas tank a little bit so you, you can go a little bit even though your stuff is past e devin never really recovered he was hurt multiple times and i i truly don't know if when you have yes men around you i don't know if that's a great formula because everyone seems bewildered at that moment they were interviewing bill haney on the segment and he was saying whatever he was saying about Devin right then and there. Devin gets dropped real hard by Ryan Garcia. I believe it was a left hook. And the the insane thing that makes you kind of reassess where you rate Devin Haney is the mere fact that Ryan is known for his left hook. That is his signature punch. And it seemed like there was no answer for it. And I'm curious, is it because you got hurt early in the first round and you were just foggy and cloudy? But it was a very, very bad night, an embarrassing night where the only thing you could really give Devin Haney is heart credit for picking himself up. And it was just a disastrous night. I didn't really see any adjustments that were made. He was getting hit with the same shots. His hands were low. His legs looked bad. He was pushing his punches. I mean, the hardest punches he was landing was when Ryan was like shelling up and he was just wailing on his back 
uh, like hitting him in the kidney or whatever. But I don't know. It was just a weird, weird performance. And to lose to a guy who seemed so nonchalant, so distracted, seemed like they weren't paying attention, claims they were drinking, miss weight. He, they, his team didn't have any type of safeguards. That lets me know right then and there, you didn't have a rematch clause. You didn't make Ryan do a same day weigh in. They thought Devin was basically invincible. So that's what I call sipping your own Kool-Aid. And in boxing, you don't want to do that. You don't want to sip your own Kool-Aid because there's always someone coming for your spot. Ryan lost to Javante Davis. So you know he's trying to solidify himself. People are saying he's fake. He's a TikToker. This didn't happen to him. That said he quit in the tank fight. So he he's looking for exactly what he got with Devin Haney. An opportunity to show that he's back. And he got it in a major way. So... Let me know, do you blame Bill Haney for the loss? Was there anything Bill Haney could have done? Could another trainer have potentially helped him? And, and for me, I the thing where I, I really, and I said this on the watch party, Bill Haney should have threw in the towel and saved his fighter. That's why I think the blame, Sauce Walker didn't really talk about that part, but I'm talking about that part. Sometimes... Okay, here's the thing. Devin showed heart, true. But his legs were bad. It was a horrible night. And ultimately, he lost anyway. So for me, the keeping your fighter in there and not throwing in the towel, you made it worse because Devin's rep and his aura and his like credibility totally in one night almost vanished million memes people no longer having faith and i think if he would have just got hurt and got knocked out it almost would have been better like let's say many pacquiao of course no one wants to get knocked out and you sleep but at the same time pacquiao just he was in a war with, with marquez a guy who always gave him tough fights and then in the end he just got hit with a one hitter quitter ish happens in boxing so people can kind of like understand it. People are still going to make fun of you, still going to make memes, but people can kind of gather that. But if you're supposed to be the next Mayweather and the dream and you're supposed to walk on water and people see you spilling around, you know, falling face first, falling your arms, tooted up, bottom in the air, like all that type of stuff. I really feel that makes it worse. So I think that's what the blame for Bill comes in heavy is he should have saved his son and that's why some people question these father son tandems and relationships in boxing is when you're seeing your seed are you going to make the right choice yay or nay good or bad are you going to prematurely pull the plug because that's your son or are you going to be like man we the haney's and then leave your person out there and they're getting cooked because from what i've seen the punishment that Ryan Garcia inflicted in those rounds could have potentially forever changed Devin Haney. And I'm not even being funny because psychologically, I mean, that was embarrassing. So psychologically, will he be as confident as he's shown to be in the Cambosis fight or the Moran fight or any of these other fights that happened before? Knowing everyone's making jokes about you, People lost faith in you. It's harder to do that. And the other thing is vulnerabilities were on full display. Does he have a suspect chin? It's looking like it, right? Does he have very limited power at 140? It's looking like it. Is he too big for 140 already? It's looking like it. And now Bill Haney kind of has his son in no man's land. And he did the talking, fighting the center of the ring, standing in the center of the ring. And he said these types of things. You put a lot of pressure on your son and you're supposed to, you know, be the one that makes sure he has less pressure on him. But in fact, you did the opposite and put more pressure on him by telling and challenging Ryan to stand in the center, trade with you and see who's the toughest. And then you clearly lost that battle 
Ryan battered him. And now you're left to kind of ultimately pick up the pieces after a horrible night. So, yeah, it's looking like another trainer could be beneficial. But here's my thing is Devin already had trainers, some of which I know. And for whatever reason, they weren't brought on or brought back or whatnot. And I don't like when a fighter takes such a bad loss and then they look for changes because now you're behind the eight ball. Now you're at a deficit. It's like a football game and you're down by five touchdowns or something. You're down by 35 or whatever. And now you got to do all these trick plays and it's just the goal is to not get down by that many touchdowns and be in such a deficit. Devin is definitely in those positions where it's like, man, do or die kind of thing. Like if he rematches Ryan, look, there's Bill Haney right there. He's just watching his son, you know, get chipped up. Round seven, especially that towel should have came in. You should have preserved your son. You know, different people might feel different ways. I'm giving you my honest opinion. You should have preserved your son because everybody's seen that he got not only in the seventh round, it looked like he was done for face first. He had a long count. The referee was helping him, helping him up, helping him gather himself. He got hurt multiple times after that. And what's it worth just so you can say, I didn't get knocked out. Yeah, you didn't get knocked out, but you continue to get hurt even after that. I think it was round 11, 12, somewhere in there. He got hurt again. You know what I mean? So his head was like pinballing. It was just bad. He was he was clearly concussed. It was bad, people. Like this was post fight. And for whatever reason, after he clearly lost a fight and that was apparent. Devin, I don't know if he was trying to show face or I, I don't know exactly what's going on. But Devin Haney tried to get on the turnbuckle to celebrate and, you know, I don't know show he was the champion to the crowd after surviving these Ryan Garcia onslaughts and he's so weak that he doesn't even have the energy to climb up look at it he don't have the listen he don't have the energy to climb up the ropes like he looks dazed and confused like he doesn't know where he's at Look, he can't even, his legs are bad. Look, you see that? I've never seen this before. And he's trying to get on. Look, do, do, do. And he falls. Like, his. he doesn't have no strength in his legs. And he's trying to get up. And look, he's spilling over. He looks like he clearly is concussed. And Bill allowed this to go on. His fighter looks bad. Like, I'll show you again. But it looks like his fighter's in bad shape. You see that? Look, falling, spilling. His face looked like a chipmunk. 